Hi everyone. Hi. And so let's. Uh, it's enough of us are here. Uh, let's start with our uh, our uh, boot camp for today. So before we start, let me give you a context uh, about myself. I'm a human today. I work as a research associate at Elite Techno Groups. Uh, I have been uh, very much interested in the domain of computational fluid dynamics uh, and uh, all related fields like fluid mechanics and fluid machineries and whatnot. Um, so uh, about the topic of today's discussion, we will be talking more about how a submarine uh, concepts are there, how it submerges, how it uh, uh, how it takes care of things, and uh, with that also we will be uh, like looking care about uh, lo looking in depth about how uh, how it visualizes, how it sees underwater, how it navigates, communicates, moves. So all these things we will talk about. Uh, and to give you the idea, towards the end of this session we will be sharing uh, uh, like a certification form link, which you can fill to avail the certificate of this uh, particular uh, bootcamp. So without any ado, uh, let's start with our session. Yeah. Now, um, before I talk about submarines uh, and uh, the general idea of what it is, I want you to want to know about your end. Like uh, from your end, like if anybody can unmute themselves uh, and explain what is a submarine, uh, that would be great. It can be anything. You can talk about. Uh, you can talk about whatever you know. What 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 the uh, what uh, this do you mean by a submarine? Like what it is? Hello, um, I couldn't couldn't quite catch you. Can you? And uh, hello, what the seat? Once again. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, you are. The engine under the. Underwater siege. Yeah, Mother Sudan. Yeah, underwater siege. Yeah. So, uh, can you explain it uh, further? Like, what uh, What do you mean by that? Pressure vessel. Okay, pressure vessel. Okay. Hi, Gaurav. Uh, you have unmuted. You can. Yeah, I would like to say that you can describe a submarine as a heavily armed pressurized vessel underwater. Yeah, great. Uh, and how about uh, how about you, uh, Muzamil? I think I'm sorry about uh, if you I'm, I'm, if I'm pronouncing your name uh, wrong. The propeller engine under the sea with a lot of arm. Okay. 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 So yeah, uh, you guys have a lot like uh, different different ideas, different different uh, things. Uh, and all of you are correct in some way or some, some way or the other, right? So let me uh, go back to the presentation and let me start with what is a submarine, right? So submarine is a basically, uh, as you said, it's a water, it's a machine underwater. It actually moves underwater uh, without uh, getting detected and uh, um, have a, it is used for majorly for warcraft where um, it used to uh, detect uh, enemy movements, uh, stealthily approach enemy territories, and uh, retrieve information and whatnot. So, basically, the design of a submarine is a cigar shaped. So, it's also called as a teardrop, as you can see over here. It's a the shape is a, is is kind of like a teardrop, and uh, it the reason for that is basically when. Uh, this kind of structure is implemented uh, in order to reduce the hydrodynamic drag while while it is moving uh, in a submerged place while it is moving underwater. So, what happens is uh, during that movement underwater, it will have less hydrodynamic drag. But uh, whenever it is trying to surface, it will have um, like a, a higher hydrodynamic drag. Hydrodynamic drag is nothing but uh, like the resistance it feels while moving underwater. And the tower at the top that you are seeing over here uh, is basically the eyes and ears of the ship. You can talk, you can say that. So it has like radio, radar, electronic components, and uh, one component for its local mast, which uh, actually has um, uh, the governing uh, the controls of these uh, systems. So that's the general idea about the submarine. 
Now, let's uh, let's take a quick look at uh, what uh, how it actually sustains itself. Like right? it's a huge machinery, it has a very heavy weight, right? So how does it sustain itself underwater at a particular position? How does it surface itself uh, from being underwater? Or um, let's say how how this submerges, right? So everybody knows about this uh, thing, uh, this uh, concept called biome force, right? So can anybody else explain uh, to me what a biome force is? It is an at-rest force given by the waters. Sir, I think your mic is muted, sir. Hello, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Oh. Thank you, thank you for the quick response. So, um, what I was saying was, basically, when we were talking, talking about this bind force, right? So, we have this, uh, uh, let's consider this is as, as a body of water, right? And this is another body of solid object which is which you are dropping in the water right so it will have a uh, opposing force equal to its uh, its weight and it will also displace the same amount of uh, water uh, that it occupies uh, the component that is occupying the space in the water so this is general like this is a basic governance idea of a buoyant force now how this is implemented in the submarines right so basically where, where what happens is when a submarine is surfaced uh, towards there are two components in a submarine so one is the inner hull which you can see over here and one is this outer uh, hollow shell right that that i'm uh, highlighting in it in red part right so this when this shell is hollow it basically uh, reduces uh, the density of the like it basically uses the overall weight and uh, as compared to the uh, the upward force or the basically buoyant force that is being applied to it and due to that it actually floats over the water because it's just that it's a density difference if your uh, density of weight is less as compared to the force and uh, uh, the force that is uh, applied on the on the submerged body then it will try to float then basically the water will be if this force is dominant then this water will try to push it upwards right so it's the same concept now as you can see here there are uh, there is this, there, there, there are these uh, openings, right? These are these are the pressure walls. So these are the walls which are uh, provided to in order, in order for us to actually uh, let the water in. So what happens is, when you open these walls, right? These walls will um, let the water in from the bottom part, and uh, the air of the uh, air inside this will be uh, propelled over here. And due to the weight of this water, because submarine is a huge ship, right? So due to the weight of this water, the overall weight of the submarine is increased and it tends to, uh, it goes into diving mode where it submerges, right? It goes uh, goes down accordingly. When you completely fill this, uh, this part over here, it will be completely submerged underwater. And uh, accordingly, there are like few components, uh, which I'll be talking about more in detail, how it actually conveys, how it actually does this motion. So this empty hull, this empty surrounding is uh, around the summer, actual submarine pressure hull is known as the ballastic tanks. Okay, so these ballastic, uh, or not ballast tanks. So ballast tanks are basically uh, an empty shell which we which we use to fill in water in order to uh, make the submarine dive. So uh, basically, there are four components. These main uh, these ballast tanks are divided into. There is the forward forward trim tank. There are two main ballast tanks, and there is rear trim tank. Uh, rear trim tank. So why are these uh, ballast tanks are uh, segregated in these four four domains or four uh, different components, right? So basically, when let me just draw one another uh, submarine. 
So my drawing skills are not that good, but yeah, you can understand with base base of ideology. Okay. So consider this is a submarine, right? Now, when you have uh, this uh, front end tank, right? So when you want to deep dive, right? So le let's consider this small part is your submarine, uh, and you want to dive uh, in a tilted manner, in 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 a like you know forward manner. So basically, what you will do is you will try to fill this uh, front tank first, right? So that your submarine will start tilting slowly. So for, uh, originally it will have a horizontal position like this, and then when you start slowly filling up the uh, front front black blast tank, it will slowly uh, start tilting downwards, and slowly then main blast tanks will started to fill up, which are situated at the center of this uh, submarine, which will again propagate uh, it to to further downward motion, and accordingly it will have the optimum angle in which it will dive down. And uh, it will uh, until it completely submerges. Uh, so when it completely submerges, you will keep going in deep diving under the water uh, below here. So it will keep going down till it reaches a position where it wants to uh, sustain, right? So then all of the at that particular point, slowly all of these tanks, like the rear tank also, will start filling up. The main blast tanks and the front tank will be completely filled up, and accordingly, it will achieve a, a perfect density or perfect weight to the like uh, to the burn force ratio, where it will have a stationary or stable position basically. So it will be again in a horizontal position. So this is how the submarine diving is actually incorporated, right? Now, how does it resurface again? So again, the same thing. So let me just uh, just erase it out down. Yeah. So how does it, uh, so let's consider this is your water level. This is your submarine, right? So this uh, submarine wants to go upside, right? So what will happen is to slowly uh, start emptying its, uh, uh, its, uh, its front tank first, right? And then it will again, it will be, it will be tilted in this direction. It will be like this. And then slowly it will again start emptying out the middle tanks and the bottom, like rear end tanks. And accordingly, it will slowly like float above. So even in usual cases, uh, it, it usually does not happen in this order. For diving purpose, it is, it is done. But for submerging purpose, if you want to be a bit more stealthy or anything, you can simultaneously start emptying out your main blast tanks, where it will directly go in this position itself and start slowly moving upward. And it will be surfaced in the same position that it was. So this is how uh, submarine diving, submerging, and uh, re-emerging over the surface works. Now, does anybody have any doubt in this point? If anybody has any doubts at this point, you can ask me. Sir, how does water exit out from the ship? Okay, how, how does it exit out, right? So as I've shown you over here, right? So this is, these are the two walls that are exit walls. These are the two walls that are input walls. So using this mechanism, they are, uh, these, uh, the uh, water can be, uh, it, the water basically is forced out. So here at the top over here, it's not shown in this image, but there is a compressed air tank also uh, situated. Due to that compressed air tank, it uh, when the sir, you are not audible. Sorry, you are good. Yeah. So please, uh, please do not uh, mute if anybody is purposely doing this. This people are getting disturbed. Yeah. So 
this basically what happens is uh, as i said so these are the these are the walls which are um, which are driving the water uh, to be which is basically allowing the water in and um, a compressed tank is situated over here which actually forces the water out uh, and it is very well calibrated the timing and what not concerning the walls closer so that it can uh, the compressed air retains its pressure um, this hull retains its pressure and accordingly it uh, uh, it facilitates so that's how it is done so are there any other doubts so what about the corrosion sir corrosion matters sir. when water is spilled in the submarine yeah water is spilled in the submarine for longer time it uh, the water stays and the sea water is the salt content uh, yeah. So, I think, uh, as, as part of mechanical properties, uh, is the metal going to be affected or not? Or we are going to apply some coating over there or anything is precautions taken there or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, there is there are precautions to be taken. There is a coated materials are used which are less corrosive to water. And uh, accordingly, that's how the ship hull is designed because it is actually designed to sustain heavy loads of pressure of that water. So, there is also that factor. Uh, and it is so uh, so much much calibrated that uh, it actually sustains for a longer time. So yeah, so it, it, the material is coated. Uh, one person. Any uh, chance? Any yeah. chances of bursting? Burst bursting, sir. Means uh, it will. Yeah, yeah. Any chances of bursting? Uh, not as not not as of yet. It's because as as I said, it's a pressure vessel, right? So it is it is its build quality is made accordingly. So that uh, there is, uh, even if a per, like uh, to tell you about more about the control part, I'm not sure how it will be explained. But uh, when you are calibrating that, right? You are calibrating the uh, pressure. So the overall, um, like the con electronic control, like electronic control part, is calibrated so that it's very. Um, the pressure will be. Uh, there is a safety design where uh, the pressure will reach up to a certain point and um, also there is this uh, there is this vacuum right so basically uh, this vacuum will also be uh, this vacuum has a gauge meter which has uh, this, this particular vacuum, vacuum at the in initial stage it has a gauge meter which uh, which doesn't allow the vacuum to go below like the pressure to decrease below a certain point so there is a safety design specifically made for that so that it doesn't get crushed so yeah sir if submarine is not working uh, or the engine in engine get filled then how it's Hello. I sir, when some when yeah. submarine's engine is not working, yeah. then how it's come under the top of the water? Engine is not working, meaning uh, so I'll come to the propulsion system. I'll uh, let you know about that in detail. How uh, it actually moves under water. So how the engine works, right? So you are talking about how it how it is able to move without an exhaust system, without um, air being or governing the fuel, right? Air, air being gover governing the engine, right? So I'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, no, sir. If the engine get damaged, then how it's come under top surface of water? Okay, okay, okay. So there is like a backup uh, system where it is a dual system. Basically, it is also um, battery operated where when you have such kind of failure, when you have engine engine failures, um, like there are, um, so there are two three precautions that, that are being taken. So there are, are two systems. One is uh, original system that is that is operated by the battery, where the power of the battery will run over overall system, and that will actually in turn uh, govern the filling up and the uh, emptying uh, down the ballast tanks, right? So. It necessarily doesn't depend on the engine itself. It depends on the backup power that the huge batteries have. So accordingly, using that power, it can surface. If in case the major damage is done, then there are safety precautions where every hull, like the whole submarine, is split into different different compartments, and every compartment will have uh, water um, water sealed doors so basically when you seal those doors uh, the water if you have a damaged submarine the water will, won't go what won't come inside after um, locking up a particular compartment so that compartment uh, that singular compartment will be completely filled by water but the rest of the compartments won't be affected and uh, uh, people will have the safety nets the uh, uh, what you call it life boat life jackets 
so that they can get out of and they can uh, resurface. So that sort of uh, safety precautions are there. Sir, can we do any research uh, research point in this submarine, sir? Is there any yeah, chance yeah. for research on the submarine? De definitely, definitely, definitely. For so, PhD like that in mechanical yeah, engineering? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Can you please tell me some points, sir, where we can uh, research in which area in the submarine? Uh, I would need to look for that actually. So to tell you about an uh, instance, I I don't have a general idea. But uh, recently, I read the study of DRDO. DRDO had uh, developed a better engine, right? Uh, the better uh, control parameter. So what I will do is I'll get through the some of the doubts because uh, I'll explain throughout the presentation. Towards the end of yes. it, I'll revisit this question, right? Okay. So yeah. So Thank there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. So one person asked Shubham. Uh, type of fluid used in tanks. So type of fluid, there is no fluid in tanks. So it's a vacuum, basically. Initially, it's a vacuum in that in the balance tanks are empty. OK, they are filled with water. And then uh, essentially, you are uh, due to the increase in weight, they, they get pulled down in the water and they get submerged. So that sort of thing. So there is no fluid in, involved. So basically, there is a compressed air which is used to force out the water. But then it again uh, is basically um, is basically decompressed uh, for the, and the overall hull vacuum is there. Now, do it have uh, any other Sharma asks, does it have any rotating part like engine or flywheel? Uh, we wa want to know if uh, it have by gyroscopic effect. Okay. So yeah, I'll cover that in just a bit. Okay. So I'll just uh, revisit the presentation. So what I was mentioning was, see, when you talk about the uh, the submarine control surfaces, right? So as you can see over here, there is this propeller which is used to drive this submarine forward, right? Once it gets uh, to the bottom, uh, once it gets to the bottom at this particular uh, uh, like stage or at this particular stable stable position under water, then the propeller will start driving it. So basically. Um, before that, uh, let me just actually cover the uh, how it actually sees underwater, right? So basically, it has the sonar ability in order to um, sense. Basically, it sends a sound sound wave, uh, sound pulse, and that pulse actually hits the any obstacles or objects uh, that are there in sea. And due to the um, uh, the time taken by reflecting the sound waves back to the uh, back to the submarine. Uh, is is going to be used for understanding how far the particular object is and uh, like what is location and whatnot. So that sort of detection method uh, is used in submarines where how uh, it uses this sort of this, this sonar technology to uh, predict and predict different locations of different obstacles or objects and accordingly move underwater. And to see the um, because this this we talked about uh, how does submarine see underwater right so what about uh, the activities that are going over surface uh, if you want if you are submerged and you want to see what activities that are going on above the surface then for that there is this device called periscope okay so it's a bunch of reflective mirrors so to tell you exactly what it is let me just draw it in a very simple fashion okay so this you can consider as a uh, periscope. This was used in very um, old, like old age, old technologies. Now there are photonic reflectors and different technologies that are emerging, which are very much advanced. So basically, this uh, mechanism actually has a reflective uh, mirrors. So basically, these mirrors will reflect a light that is coming on, coming from the from the surface. And basically, this part is uh, half submerged, and it's a uh, half. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, basically above water. Uh, so whatever it sees, uh, it will be reflected back through a bunch of mirrors. Accordingly, you will be able to see uh, the corrected position or corrected uh, view. So this is how it is used. Uh, submarine is used to see uh, the surface level objects, uh, even though it is submerged condition. Right now. There are uh, now. Let's discuss about the propulsion system of a submarine. Uh, basically, a propulsion system has. Th there are two kinds of system. Uh, one is a diesel. Uh, there is one air independent system, 
and there is one diesel electric system. So this diesel electric system is a older one. Air independent is the newer one. So in the older one, the diesel electric, what happens is there are two kinds of uh, systems. One is the diesel generator, which uh, which is used to generate the electricity uh, when the submarine is above water. So so that there will be access of air. So let's consider this uh, submarine to be uh, above water, and let's uh, let's consider that because basically what happens is over here when the diesel is generating uh, the electricity, it needs air, right? So the exhaust system also uh, the, for it needs air also, and it actually needs to exhaust the exhaust flue gases out of this. So basically, when you are uh, when you are above the, above the water level, water surface this exhaust system will be activated there are two kinds of walls so one is the inboard wall and one is the outboard wall so as i said there are two compartments it's divided into the main pressure hull and the uh, outer uh, outer covering of the submarine so in order to calibrate in order to maintain the pressure uh, first the exhaust system uh, the exhaust gases will be collected in a in some sort of a tank uh, like a horizontal big tank and in, in the inboard system itself in the inboard pressure wall uh, then the inboard pressure wall will be opened. It will be moved, moving to from inboard pressure pressure uh, sorry, from the pressure hull to the outboard hull, and uh, accordingly it will be released uh, from uh, by closing the inboard wall and opening the outboard wall, which is over here, which is over at this snorkel, and it is then exhausted uh, out. So this is this is what happens before uh, it actually goes into deep dive. Now whatever electricity that is being generated over here is used to store uh, it is basically stored in these large chunk of batteries this these batteries basically the biggest uh, uh, this thing is basically when we close the outboard wall and when you go to deep diving these batteries will then operate the propeller in order to move the submarine underwater and when you are moving uh, over surface then you are just using the diesel generator directly powering the pro propeller in order to move it uh, so over the water surface right so what happens is uh, essentially when uh, so uh, this is this is what it's called as air dependent system right as uh, basically a diesel electric system which is air dependent which you need to surface the submarine every single day to recharge the batteries and then go back again so you can by using this propulsion system you have to revisit the surface every single day but if you are on a stealth engine say you want to stay underwater for a week what would you do right so for that case uh, as i said uh, i was talking about the drdo research right so it was uh, it uh, drdo has developed um, uh, like a better performing uh, air independent system air independent system technology was already there which uses a kind of like a, a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell uh, to combine uh, by by combining hydrogen oxygen using a fuel cell it uh, the byproduct is water essentially it is released into the into the stream underwater and uh, the the fuel cell is very very much efficient so it is basically the whatever the heat uh, is being discharged by that um, by that uh, reaction is then used to generate electricity so that sort of fuel cell technology is used in air independent system where your submarine can stay underwater for as long as a week so it doesn't have to surface for uh, replenishing the oxygen uh, uh, in throughout the week so that level of um, uh, like propulsion systems are in place uh, over there so before moving on uh, let's have some questions i'm sure you will have some questions the new technology in submarines today are about propulsion, especially AIP, uh, which is which few nations have their on their submarines for longer endurance of submarines without resurfacing to charge the batteries. So that uh, would be good for topic to research about seeing the current advancements in Indian Navy projects for upcoming SS, SS, SSNs and SSBNs. So yeah, um, Gaurav Mohati actually suggested a very good uh, suggestion to you, Kamlesh. Uh, so you can actually explore because DRDO existingly is currently working on improving the AIP, Air Independent Propulsion System. So that that is a very good topic to go forward with. That's like a very good lead to go forward with. Uh, apart from that, uh, 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 as I will again revisit the question by Adarsh, uh, does it have any rotating part like engine or flywheel? So as I shown you, there was a propeller, uh, which is kind of a, like which which is moving part, which is which is used to move the 
a ship, but um, it actually rotates uh, on its own axis. It's not like uh, it does, it uh, it doesn't it won't really have any gyroscopic effect or anything. So it's uh, it, it actually an advanced concept, so which uh, which we can actually visit uh, uh, in few uh, in, in next uh, few sessions if if it's possible. Uh, apart from this, uh, does anybody have any doubt uh, considering what we have just discussed? So as uh, nobody has any doubt, so we can move forward and let me continue with the discussion. Okay. So let me just remove this once. Yeah. So when we talk about different compartments of a submarine, right? So I just mainly talked about propulsion system. But apart from the propulsion system, there is a control compartment, there is a conning tower which is right above the control compartment. There is accommodation compartment, like crew accommodation. Uh, then there, are, there is auxiliary systems, which is, which is basically a backup system. If your main system fails, then that auxiliary system will turn on and it will, uh, it will function the submarine and it is sufficient to uh, get the submarine uh, over surface. Uh, in worst cases, um, if it's, if it's not functioning, then there are life jackets, life boats, and so all these precautions are there. Now, when we talk about the control compartment, control compartment is basically the uh, the system where it is, uh, uh, so where everything is governed from. So one other sub compartment of the control compartment is called as uh, conning tower, as I mentioned. So that that is where you are uh, you are doing all these activities like seeing, uh, visualizing, uh, sensing, like all the radar, radios, whatnot uh, technologies that are there, which is used to see, which is used to move forward uh, and sense different things, uh, analyze different things, which 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 will be held or which will be governed by this conning tower. Uh, by even conning, uh, conning tower has the periscope installed, where you are actually able to see the surface level, uh, what what is happening on the surface uh, while being submerged. Now, that's about the overall construction. That's about the overall idea of the uh, submarine, right? So, how is the life on submarine? So basically, when you talk about life on submarine, it's it's kind of dull because when you see there, there are no actual windows. There, there is nothing uh, to have a context to. When you are underwater, you you might be underwater for say weeks. Uh, then, like you still be resurfacing, but you will not be able to get out of the submarine. So it's it's kind of a, like a dull life. But yeah, so whatever technologies that we are using in this submarine or what, the advanced researches that are being done, uh, it's really cool to see that uh, we will be able to have um, things like uh, like better better firepower equipped uh, uh, on our submarine. So uh, let me tell you a fun fact uh, when about when we ha when these uh, submarines were invented it was the period of uh, world war 1 and when was it when it was invented whatever the firepower that was collectively used by the navies in the world war 1 is can be accommodated in a single submarine of today's day today's uh, submarine so that level of firepower a submarine has so uh, by having multiple torpedoes, by having nuclear missiles and whatnot. So this is this is the uh, this is how a submarine technology has advanced, and uh, this is how it is it has grown uh, to be a greater length uh, uh, in this case. So uh, that's about it, uh, guys. If you have any questions, uh, I'm open to have more questions. So this diesel engine makes so many no noise. Then yeah. how? Then how? Uh, some uh, other yeah, submarine yeah. try to locate you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what happens is basically when you are uh, recharging your batteries, right? Uh, 
this is the biggest advantage of the diesel system when you are moving in stealthily you won't generally have a, a diesel electric operating propulsion system installed or if even if you do you need to actually resurface at a particular point where it's not detectable where it is not uh, detectable by the enemies so that that is the biggest disadvantage of a diesel system because you have to revisit surface you have to uh, let uh, let the diesel generators generate electricity power the batteries and then go back into the water submerge yourself and on your way so that is the, that's why the air independent propulsion system is more in play more in power because uh, imagine if you were to live under water for a month and nobody will be able to detect that you are there you are collecting information you are collecting terrain data territory data uh, you are collecting the different general idea about where enemy ships or enemy um, uh, different uh, the checkpoints are located so this is one this is one interesting thing that uh, heavy research is being done on uh, it's currently people are doing yeah how can a person stays in a submarine for a week is there any provision for ventilation or a treated fresh air like hvac yes 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 so there is air provision systems so when with this advanced uh, what we call it advanced uh, machineries there there are very um, there is a compressed air storage like large compressed air sort of storages which then are released to the to that uh, which are then basically released to uh, have it an or an atmospheric level pressure air pressure where uh, people will have like oxygen to breathe in so yeah so all those systems are in place and uh, yeah for, for ventilation purpose when you are surfacing out for so when you are surfacing uh, it will be then then refreshed and accordingly so yeah so it is there how is heat dissipated in nuclear powered submarines okay so um i actually have not uh, heard about uh, nuclear powered submarine so uh, what i can do is i'll i'll have a better understanding of that because i'm i'm not that level of expert in these domain so i have a uh, understanding of how it operates and how it works but yeah it's definitely a good thing to check out but the context of this is basically when we talk about uh, nuclear power right so nuclear power uh, is essentially not powering the system but it's uh, used uh, like nuclear missiles are basically used uh, for for higher firepower um, for enemy attacks and what not so yeah basically us has the biggest uh, uh, fleet of submarines which has a lot of uh, like nuclear sub uh, sub uh, like like nuclear uh, missiles in their submarines um, also india also has a uh, few submarines that have uh, nuclear powered missiles so yeah So, are there any more questions? Yeah, you can ask me anything in terms of the submarines and how, uh, what, whatever the. operations things are there which i have just explained if you want me to re explain some things i can also do, totally do that uh, you can share uh, if you have anything uh, any question any ideas any any new uh, ideology you can share sir how the uh, ansari asks sir how does a submarine shoots on its target precisely i mean how it balances the repulsion force under water okay so yeah so when you are talking about a torpedo right so the torpedo has its own uh, navigation system so basically it is uh, so with the latest technology latest inventions that are happening it has its own um, uh, preset controlling system which actually uh, pinpoints the target 
and accordingly tropodomos it has its own propulsion system in a way uh, which it is which is used uh, to propel the the torpedo so it's not actually launched it it's actually released in the water so that's that's how uh, it is tackled So yeah. Uh, so uh, actually, I do have some uh, some things to share with you. Uh, as as we talked about uh, submarines, as we talked uh, in this session, we talked about uh, different uh, submarines, different uh, like not different submarines, different propulsion systems. We talked about how a submarine is actually constructed, how it submerges, how it surface surfaces. And the overall ideologies, the overall concepts, what sort of basic principle it uses to move forward and uh, actually move underwater, right? So um, similar ideologies, like to develop this level of understanding, to develop these concepts, to so apply actually these concepts, because these all these subsystems are designed by engineers, right? All these subsystems or systems require design. So in in some cases, it will require CFD uh, in order to analyze the overall forces that are that we are dealing with in order to uh, predict the uh, the functioning of the overall uh, overall submarine or overall ship uh, under high pressures uh, so for that cases you have different different uh, domains that you need to we would be working in like a design domain is there to construct to design uh, make newer like optimized shapes optimized ideologies from the point of mechanical engineers you will have um, along with uh, in advanced concepts you, it will be ca where it is uh, uh, you will be doing the structural analysis of the ship hull in order to check its structural integrity you will be doing its uh, cfd in order to understand the propulsion flows in order to understand the overall flow you will also have um, uh, for for uh, for uh, you'll, you'll show all of these is limited to um, certain kind of mechanical side of things but when you talk about electronics there is a huge um, requirement electronics because heavily you need to have precise control you need to have precise um, movement in order to control this uh, submarine this large ship and is actually connected to one big control system has its own subsystems which are called as embedded systems which are basically used for controlling so electronics point of view there is also a lot of scope so uh, the point of uh, telling you all this is basically when we we, we talk about um, when you talk about these things, there are a lot of scope, a lot of future opportunities in these different domains. Uh, Diva Raja says that what is the material that is used in the outside parts of the submarine? Though I actually am not sure about that. I, I think it's a, some kind of composite alloy which is used to stand on the outer cover. And there is also a metal coating provided so for, for preventing the corrosion. But yeah, I'm sure you'll be able to easily Google it out. So it's uh, easily available. So yeah. So uh, the point of telling you all this is basically when you go ahead, when you have uh, this ideology in order to develop this ideology, you can actually uh, come to us. You can uh, have a uh, uh, visit our website. We are at Elite Techno Groups. We have different different courses that we provide in different different domains, which give the better understanding, the better clarity of different things. So the same thing that I mentioned about uh, engineering design in computational fluid dynamics, right? So these these are the advanced concepts which are basically used to predict the overall behavior around the um, around the submarine and whatnot. So in order to have uh, in order to have it op op optimum, uh, in order to have it operated. At a better, uh, like a better performance and whatnot. So, uh, let me share uh, the uh, the one of the courses that we have, which is called as a specialization in design and CAE uh, engineering. Uh, we have this uh, uh, this particular course will cover from all the basics from the design point of view, or and also advanced concepts like um, CFD, CAE, and it has a plethora of different different projects which you can actually get hands-on experience with. You can actually work on different different projects, which will give you a better understanding, which will give you uh, hands-on ideology of how a particular uh, vehicle or how a particular component design, how a particular uh, component is analyzed like doing a crash analysis of a vehicle doing a, a 
like a flow analysis of a centrifugal pump, what sort of pressure it is which is building. So these are the some of the ideologies that you will be able to build through our specialization program. And uh, there is also um, uh, special features that we provide where you will get a guaranteed trade off like internship, you will get master degree certificate, letter of recommendation, you will get um, certifications from multiple um, organizations throughout our specialization. And uh, you can uh, you can avail our free counseling along with this. Basically, we have a guided career counseling which you provide for free, where you can just click uh, just click on the Ask an Expert button, and you will be able to um, get uh, better information about the uh, the fee structure and uh, based on your capabilities, based on your ideologies, we can uh, we can develop this. Uh, you you can actually enroll and actually have a better clarity of how these things work and get a head start in your career. So the, that's that's the general idea accordingly we have. And uh, let me share the uh, link of this website. Let me share uh, the form link that I was talking about. So this is our link of the website. And I'll just share the form link uh, for the for the webinar registrations, uh, for the, not webinar registrations, for the certification form, I'm sorry. So yeah, so I'll just tag it as certification form. Yeah, you can go ahead, uh, fill out this form, and you can, if you have, if you need further more clarity on things, so we can actually have a discussion on that. So. There are a few questions that in the chat box are there. Uh, Gaurav Monty said, how does a sonar operator in a submarine identify enemy warships and submarines in her proximity? How does acoustics play a role here? Uh, is it the sound of propeller that differentiates enemy with, an, with any civilian vessel? OK. So basically, it uses two kinds of uh, two kinds of uh, systems in order to visualize so one is the sonar detection which actually detects the underwater things right and one is the periscope that actually sees the uh, surface level right what what is happening whatever is happening on the surface level so by using both of them together you can actually see uh, whether it's a, a like civilian vessel whether it's a, uh, enemy warfare and actually it depends like what sort of uh, water territory you are in uh, so accordingly you move move forward so that sort of thing is there so all uh, all of these operators and all of these personnel will have a very much guided information uh, provided to them accordingly they based on that information itself they um, go ahead and uh, move forward uh, as far as the acoustics are concerned um, acoustics are very um, for the, for the ship operation, uh, for the ship operation and ship uh, exactly like for the ship operation, the autumn, uh, the acoustics are very minimal. So the ship doesn't make any kind of noise. It, it actually minimizes. Uh, it, it, it doesn't have. Uh, it has a very low noise that uh, does not propagate at a larger place. So you won't be able to hear. Uh, you won't be able to detect. So that sort of thing we actually uh, 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 like we actually do advancements into or look to look more into for research purposes for having more opportunities too. So yeah. So that's that I uh, hopefully that answers your question, Gaurav. So I'll be here for a few minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat box. You can unmute yourself and ask. So yeah.
Thank you, Diva. Thank you for this wonderful comment. Have a nice day. Uh, Chandra Gupta, yeah, uh, we'll be looking for... So you can drop your uh, email in the chat itself. Uh, our operations uh, person will take care of it. So you will receive the certificate. Or you can actually mention uh, the details so, over there as well. Because it's a, um, because there are a lot of people that we need to provide the certifications to, to actually have some kind of details. But yeah, you will receive uh, your certificate. Uh, Again, guys, I'm here for a few minutes. Uh, you can have the certification form uh, link in the, in, the, in the chat box. And uh, actually, I wanted to mention those who are actually watching it live on YouTube, uh, they will also have the certification form link in the description. So you can actually fill, up, fill that out over there. And yeah, you will be able to avail the free counseling and you will be able to get a better guidance in that regard where your career is heading. Thank you, Hemant Kumar. access the presentation by any means uh, I'm not sure uh, Gaurav uh, I will I'll see but I'm not sure about that you're welcome Omkar thank you thank you Gaurav Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, keep learning, keep exploring. It was a great session. Uh, I really had fun talking to you all. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.